Hi, I am Pastor Siwana. And I'm coming your way with a new series, The Testaments Beyond the Books. What are the Testaments? The Old Testament and the New Testament? Are they just books? Are they just writings? We want to look into the books and to discover the hidden truth of the Testament. Our faith, our worship, our practice, all based on the Testament, the covenant we are running with. Join me as we journey together in this studies. God bless you. God is saying, when I see the bow, I will remember my covenant. The remembrance there is not just recognizing, but it's talking about the commitment of God to keeping the covenant. I said it's an everlasting covenant. This is one of the covenant God made with man, and it is called everlasting covenant. Amen. So his covenant in saving man and not to bring flood to destroy man is to set a bow. So the bow, the rainbow was to them a sign, a sign talking about the, the promise of God. God makes a promise. He gives a sign that when the time you see this sign, it's a reminder that God is keeping his promise. But today we see flood still taking people. That is not from God. That is the consequences of man's own errors, human errors. So God is not going to bring flood. If anyone tells you that God said he's going to bring flood, God said he's going to bring tsunami, God said he's going to bring this to destroy, it's not from God. This is a covenant God made. So where do we get all this? They are all from the works of man. They are all from human uh, uh, mistakes and errors and human uh, 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 inventions. You know, when we keep our gutters stuck, why won't flood come? So after this covenant, anytime you see flood, it is human invention. It is human flood. It is human creation. Remember the first rain that came on earth was judgment but after that rain comes and rain is now the blessings of God so the water that was supposed to come from the ground to water the plant is now coming up the sky from the clouds so if we say that the creation or the world or the earth God created is no more the earth we are living in this is what we are talking about this is one of them God designed that water should come from the ground. But now, the water we have coming from the ground, you see them just in wells, a portion, just some small corner, small place, and water is coming out. When we see it, we are happy. It wasn't designed that way. The whole earth was supposed to bring forth, especially to water the plants. But now water comes from the clouds. So remember, in covenant making, there are promises, and in covenant making, there are two parties. You have two parties, two people involved in the making of the covenant. But the covenant that was made to Noah, Noah didn't contribute to the making of the covenant. It was God's initiation. It was the making of God. It was the promise of God. He said, I will establish my covenant. And now he said, I have established my covenant between me and you and your descendants and the creatures, all creatures. So the covenant of God comes to us. The first covenant we have, that God is involved with man, making covenant with man, is the covenant that was established solely on God without human contribution. Take note of this, because we will view other covenant that God made with humans or with man, and you see other things. So the first covenant is here. We'll look at another covenant. Before we go to the other covenant, I want us to read something to understand this whole concept when we're looking at the verse 3 of Genesis 6 for more clarification. Look at Second Peter chapter 2 and the verse 4 and 5. Second Peter chapter 2 and the verse 4 and 5. 
For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to pits of darkness, reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, with seven others, when he brought the flood upon the world of the ungodly. There is no sparing. Every sin man commits. There is a payment. And this sin of disobedience. Now we see Noah as a preacher of righteousness. The people enjoy sin than repenting or repentance. They decided to go their way, rejecting the ways of God. So who was Noah? Noah was a preacher. So Noah preached to them. And he's saying that even angels who sin, they are kept in darkness. Noah's time, the people who didn't believe, who didn't receive the preaching of Noah, the message, the gospel that Noah preached, they too perished. And only seven people were saved. Seven people, including Noah. Eight. So eight people were saved. And the rest condemned. If you reject the message of Christ today, you will go through the same thing. It is supposed to be lesson to teach you that you must receive Christ in order to escape. You know what that act represented? The act represented salvation. That those who come into the act are saved. So the act will stand for Christ. The act will represent the body of Christ. So come into the church where salvation is preached. Come into Christ who brought salvation to all men. Receiving Christ is receiving salvation. If you reject Christ, you have rejected salvation. So if you are listening to me, my plead with you is, the Spirit of God will not stay. God will not keep this for long. He's given you time as he gave the people of Noah. The people of Noah was given 120 years to repent. And in making the ark, Noah was preaching to them. And they rejected it and refused. And they were condemned. The flood took them. It wiped them away. God said, I'm going to wipe them away. But he has made an escape. God said, there is judgment coming. But Jesus is the way. Come to him. And yet people are rejecting. The same way people disobeyed the preaching of Noah and stayed and continued in their sin, so men are living today and the same thing that happened to them will happen to you unless you repent by coming to Christ. 